going on everyone welcome back to another video if you don't know who i am that means you're new i'm mark let's go with y'all go check out my other videos check them out check them out but first stay on this one so let's get right into it you saw the thumbnail you read the title i'm trying to be better about not messing that up here <laughs> but you saw the thumbnail <coughs> you read the title three qualities to look for when choosing your self-defense calibers now some of y'all might be wondering do these qualities change based off what you're using the caliber for? For example, like, you know, would I apply the same qualities for my concealed carry gun that I would my home defense gun? Well, I'm going to get into all that. But for starters, the three qualities that you generally speaking want to look for is reliability, availability, and effectiveness. And I'm going to go into what each of those mean, and I'm going to go into necessarily why those are so important all right so let's get started for starters we're going to start with reliability now reliability can mean a bunch of different things to a bunch of different people they can try to you know argue it for various things but of course i'm referring to the round being a mechanically reliable round so that pretty much takes all rim fire cartridges out the question it's unfortunate but true center fire cartridges are much better for any form of self-defense due to the fact that they tend to be a lot more reliable than a rimfire cartridge is. Excuse me. So just getting that out of the way, we're not even just discussing here like a light primer strike or anything. We're also talking about a round that reliably will feed into your gun. There are some guns that, yeah, sure, you know, they're okay guns, but you get some ammo and it's going to be garbage. You know what I mean? It really is all just based off of what you're working with here. So this is why you want to make sure to do the research. So <clears throat> reliability is a huge deal, obviously. You don't want any form of malfunctions, especially because of the, the caliber you chose. And some people, while they might not want to admit it, just because a firearm is chambered or created for a certain caliber doesn't necessarily mean that that caliber is always going to function in there. There is such a thing as unreliable cartridges. Now, moving on from number one, because reliability seemed, you know, common sense enough. Availability. You need to train with your, with any of your self-defense weapons, you need to train. You need to practice with them. You need to shoot them. If it's a concealed, uh, excuse me, if it's a concealed carry gun, you need to practice drawing. If, you know, if it's your home defense gun, you're going to have to practice clearing your home every couple of times. You know, like every couple of times, every, you know what I mean? Practice clearing your home. My point is, practice is essential and what <gasps> girl you know you were in the wrong for that go somewhere sorry about that that was very rude of her guys as i was saying practicing is essential and what's going to come with practicing with firearms is going to be shooting and if your ammo is not going to be available then how often are you going to be able to shoot not super often, not to mention that even if you are able to shoot, it's more likely than not going to break the bank. Uh, I mean, let's be honest here for a second. Name one cartridge that is just not, name one cartridge that's hard to find but not expensive. You really can't because most of the cartridges that are hard to find are not being made as often. Therefore, they are going to have a higher price tag to them, generally speaking. So therefore, availability is a huge deal. You need to be able to afford the ammo, which has to go with the availability because if there's very little ammo available, I bet you money it's not gonna be cheap. And you need to be able to get access to the ammo so that way you can sit there and go practice. You need to shoot, you need to train. Once again, all of these things are very important and choosing a caliber that allows you to do such a thing is also extremely important. So. Let's just recap so far what we've got done here. Number one, we have reliability. Two, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, availability. And three, now, what well, we're moving on to, effectiveness. Now, this is where some people, they, you know, tend to get their, their, you know, I guess they get their feathers ruffled, especially the 22 guys. Here's the funny thing is that they like to argue, you know, oh, well, a 22 is just fine when it comes to effectiveness. It's not. Uh, 
same way, it's also not just as reliable as center fire cartridges because it's a rim fire cartridge. But generally speaking, when it comes to effectiveness, you want a caliber that's going to do a, a good enough job at stopping the threat. Now, some people, they like to go for a tiny bit over. You know what I mean? There are some people who are carrying 10 mil, whatnot. You know what I mean? They probably are out in areas where they're going to have to deal with bears. Whatever. Not a big deal. My point is that you want to make sure that the round that you are carrying and using for your self-defense situations, whether we're talking a rifle round, a you know, shotgun round, a handgun round, you want to make sure that it's going to be effective. You want to make sure that there is at least a good chance of it stopping the threat. Because I'm sorry, let's be 100% honest here. There are very few rounds that will stop somebody with one shot, especially when it's out of handguns. Rifles and shotguns, that's a very, very different story. Handguns in particular, yeah, it's going to be, you know, generally speaking, it's going to be more difficult to, you know, take somebody down with one round. However, you still want a handgun round that's going to be able to do a much better job than... For example, like a 22 LR would. <clears throat> Some people might look at it and be like, oh, he's just trying to use this video to hate on 22. That's not really it, but that's just, it's a perfect example of a caliber that people recommend for self-defense when it's, it's not effective. I know I just sat there and just spit everywhere. <laughs> but back to what I was saying, the effectiveness of being, like just the round's effectiveness, you being able to stop a threat when you need to is a huge deal no matter how people want to try to portray it oh well you know if you, if you have a low recoil round you can just get an extra round off and that'll stop them you know i don't want to take that risk necessarily so truth be told some people aren't going to like to hear this but to find a caliber that's going to suit you it's probably best that it meets all three of these requirements the main reason why that is The main reason why that is is because of your, if you get the other two but don't have reliability, risk malfunctions. You get the other two but you don't have the availability, how are you going to train? How are you going to be able to be good with your weapon? If you get the other two but don't have effectiveness, how are you going to stop a threat? How would you actually defend yourself? So. Overall, I'm not here to sit here and tell you guys what I think is the best caliber. I actually did a video talking about what I think is the best handgun caliber. If you guys haven't seen that, check that out. But what I am saying is that generally speaking, for all self-defense calibers, whether we're talking a rifle round, a shotgun round, a handgun round, whatever it may be, you want to make sure that it can meet those three requirements because that's going to give you the best chance to be able to train be able to get better with your weapon it's going to give you the best overall chance of being able to protect yourself now with that being said i think that about wraps it up for this video y'all make sure to like comment subscribe share hit that bell we hit that bell hit all and whether or not you agree with me if you don't agree with me i want to know what makes you choose your self-defense calibers but whether or not you agree with me, make sure to check out all my other videos. Y'all make sure to stay legal, stay safe, stay dangerous. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.